What's up, Tag Nerds? Lottie here. Uh, today we are going to be covering the infrared wiring that I've been putting on uh, and a couple of other things. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run through what we've been, or what rather Peter's been up to out here. As you will see, I have cleaned up a little bit more of the mess, uh, so most of that is inside the tank. Uh, over here, Peter has been putting all of the bits and pieces on the engine. Uh, not going to cover too much right now because when we time the engine, I want to do a whole video on how to time this. Um, so we'll cover that when we get to it. Um, but yeah, he's been doing all that sort of good stuff. Okay, now we're going to go jump into the Centurion. This one's going to be fun. Take my cheat sheet with me. As you can see, we've been busy unpacking little brown boxes and everything. It's like Christmas, but I don't know what everything is. So, ugh, crawling in. And no, we didn't get robbed. I've just moved a lot of stuff around, which I will explain when I get down. Unfortunately, I don't have the basket to stand on this time. Eh. There we go. And get my cheat sheet. Okie dokie. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you will notice I have done quite a bit of remodeling in here. And that's because I'm a little gremlin and I like doing things this way. So I've actually moved the uh, basket. So this is the basket that is normally on the floor. Um, but I've tied it up. I don't know if you can really see it to the gun carriage so I can crawl in and out, which I'll get to in a second. And I've also split the, um, uh, this is a four round ammunition storage box uh, for the loader and it actually breaks in half on the later model Centurions. I was actually reading in the book and the uh, Mark 1s and I think Mark 2s, it's a single unit which I can imagine would be miserable. Um, but yeah, this is the RBJ or Rotary Base Junction and while I have this opportunity um, I thought I might point it out. We'll get to that one in a second. Um, but essentially this is a giant plug um, but it rotates or it allows uh, wiring to go through a rotating junction, hence uh, RBJ. Again, I'll cover that more later. So <laughs> what uh, I've been doing is installing the infrared wiring kit, which is this and some stuff spread around, uh, spread around the rest of the tank, which we will have a look at. Now, I am not done. Uh, and that is because all I have is this wiring diagram, which is annoying, actually. <laughs> um, I, I don't know the best way to put it, but if you've ever watched one of those, like, YouTube videos where they buy, like, a cheap Chinese sort of, like, add-on part for your car, that's what it feels like in <laughs> installing this. You can really tell it was a... Um, a secondary thought, not a not a primary thought, when they were um, when they were thinking of it, which makes sense. Modern day tanks, infrared, um, or your heat vision, night vision, all that sort of stuff comes standard. But on old tanks like this, it was practically brand new, so new that they hadn't actually install <laughs> installed it into all the vehicles. Uh, so that's what I'm getting to do today. So. Um, as I've been deciphering, uh, the wang diagram, I've been learning quite a lot. So, and this is one of those rare opportunities where I actually have very little prior knowledge with installing these. So I am learning pretty much as I go and it's been quite fun. So, um, finally found out what this is, this bracket and that is for the battery or batteries I should say still trying to figure out what size um because again that is all I've been told um and I've just been using it as a little workbench as I do other stuff around here so this is the um IR distribution box so basically all the wires need to like go into there 
I don't have a wiring diagram as to what's on the inside and I don't really want to pull it apart right now. If anything goes wrong, then I'll have a look at it. Or if I can find a wiring diagram, then I'll sort of figure it out. Uh, but I've got a decent idea of what is going on in the inside. Um, so, uh, I've got to figure this one out. Okay, so this one and the, this wire at the back here, these two, they go to the batteries here. Um, which should be on this little box here. Uh, this one, if I can remember correctly. Yep, all right, so this big one here, it plugs into these pre-existing uh, ones. The, this is essentially the like the main um, junction box for the power supply on the tank. And it tells, um, it basically cuts out the oxygen, which is, the auxiliary generator which is behind me over here it tells it when to turn the other generator off when that one's on um so a lot these burn out as you have seen in my previous videos so um it plugs into there so that's where it gets a lot of its power from um judging by how many cables and all that go to it. Interestingly enough, and I still haven't quite worked this out, but on one of the bits where are we? Booster coil. It actually plugs into the booster coil, um, which is, it's one of these cables. Trust me, um, yeah. <laughs> and one of those cables goes into the, into the booster coil, which is really strange. Haven't quite figured that one out yet, but I have an idea that it's got something to do with uh, when you press the ignition on, because this only operates when the ignition is on. Um, so yeah, that's, oh, sorry, when the starter button is pressed, but we don't use them. Um, it's just sort of been our running philosophy that if you need a booster, uh, yeah, well, at least in this sort of climate, uh, the engine probably isn't set up correctly. So we've never actually run a Centurion with the booster coil. They have them installed, but we never, we just, unplug them uh, because that way you know that your tank is working lovely it should start without a booster coil that's just my philosophy feel free to argue with me uh, more of these cables plug into here uh, specifically one of them goes in here haven't done that one yet and then there's an auxiliary panel behind here that i'm gonna have to get to eventually there we go turning the camera back around scary um i'm actually sitting on the rest of the ammunition boxes and here's all the ammunition stuff that i pulled out from under here um i had to also get rid of the turret monster um i'm probably more scary than it anyway we'll get to that in a second so why did i do this uh it's so i could run the wires to the front we'll go look at that right now Okay, the rest of the wires. Um, this one down the bottom goes to the driver's periscope. So that's the driver's hole over there. And this one goes to the RBJ, um, which I was telling you is right here. So how does it get from there to there? Well, that's why I needed a nice little workspace. So I'm gonna crawl down like a little gremlin and see I've been running wires all the way through the tank. It's cramped even for me. Um, down here, I'll turn the light on. There we go. So this is, yeah, interestingly enough, I can't find anything in the major book about what this is, but in the little wiring diagram that I was given, it is the hull junction box for the RBJ, which I disagree with. If I was going to pick an, uh, a junction box, um, I would have called that the junction box back there. But we can agree to disagree. So what is all of this nonsense? Uh, quite basic. This is uh, running it down to basics. It's essentially just a power socket <laughs> um, but it's broken down into all of its little wires and such and basically all of these which I've still got to attach a bunch of these to uh, it goes down well rather it goes into this down 
across, around here, down through here, next to the batteries, and to the RBJ. So, yeah. Um, I also, because I had to get rid of all this, because I have a sinking suspicion that this was not set up correctly. Not the RBJ, but um, specifically this one over here. Looking at the wiring diagram, I need number... 18, I think, 18, yep, 18, which is this one here, easy enough, um, I can fit it on this one, the problem is when we go to the other side, so, why is all the way back, all the way back to the RBJ, um, I'll probably try and do a video on this, maybe in the next couple of days, um, but as I was telling you before, basically all this is, is a way of putting wires from a stationary hull. So this is the flaw. It doesn't move at all. None of this moves. It can't. But everything above it, here and here, is the tart. So it needs to be able to rotate 360 degrees um, at all times. So how do you get power from the batteries and the generators and the oxygen and all that, which are in the hull, into a rotating tart, you use a rotary base junction. Uh, I am in two minds whether or not to open it up, but the fact that it is so well sealed, I really don't want to. Um, but normally when the turrets fail on Centurions, this is what fails, because it's obviously at the bottom, and all of this rusts out and gets gunk in it and all the oil from the gun drips down onto here and yucky stuff but that's essentially what it does it just allows uh, power to come through and rotates then uh blah, 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 the wires go up and around through all their nonsense and then up into the turret which i now have to stand up in which is again why uh, there we go. Which is why I had to move some of the stuff. And here we are in the gunner's slash commander's position. Okay, this is another bit that I've had to install. This is the IR switch unit, as it says so on the box. Um, our, all of the wiring that I showed before. So the wiring that I showed before actually plugs into this box. So this is the other side of the RBJ. Uh, and as we're looking through, uh, we can count down. Oh, have a look at that. Oh, cheeky. See, this is why we got to check everything because it should be 23, 22, 21, 20. There's an 18 in the middle. So, um, Basically what these do, I need to group all of these together and then fit uh, these cables here to one of them. And that acts as the positive and the negative, or negative and positive, whichever one. But then this one connects to the Metadyne, which is that one down there, the big round thing down there. That's the Metadyne. So I need to actually splice that cable uh, rather the cable that plugs into here, which is this one, uh, into the Metadyne. And then that can send a signal back down through the RBJ, which is uh, over, th over there. You get what I mean. Back through to that one, and then all the way back to... <laughs> Oh, this is going to be such a terrible video. I apologize. Um, let me turn around. So, yeah, uh, I'm, that one feeds into the Metadyne, and then it, the Metadyne provides power to that line, which goes back to the distribution box. In my mind, that is to shut off another part of the power supply, because the Metadyne is a power source. Um, and if it's getting power at this end, it doesn't need all of it down there. And my hypothesis is that it shuts off the battery or it shuts down one of the auxiliary. Um, it stops power coming in through the auxiliaries uh, to charge the batteries uh, because the Metadyne will do that. Just a thought. Um, but again, all I have is that little 
one bit of paper, uh, which is fine. I'm still learning, uh, but you get to join me on this one. More stuff. Okay. Uh, okay, the other ones. So this one plugs into the gunner's periscope. We don't have the right periscopes uh, yet. So when we get infrared capable uh, periscopes, this one goes to the gunner. Um, that is actually the main cable. Rather, this is the main cable that's hanging down here. The only reason it's hanging down here is because it needs to plug into the top of the roof and it goes to uh, the light out there. Uh, the bottom ones, uh, I already explained, this one here, that plugs into there, whatever, um, this one here, this one goes, I've tied it all the way back, blah, 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 stuff over here, back, 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 over here, this is a wire drum, um, and this is for the commander's periscope, uh, and it just plugs into the commander's periscope, which again, we don't currently have, but I'm hoping we've got one floating around. Uh, this is on a sort of a pulley, so the whole idea is that you pull it. It's a little stiff, so I've got to fix that, but it does rotate. It won't for me now because I, there we go. Eh. So it does rotate. <laughs> um, but the idea behind that is because uh, the commander's cupola moves like another turret, um, it would either need an RBJ for this little one, which is a complete waste of time and resources, or you basically tell the commander, plug yourself in and plug yourself out and make sure you wind up your cable so it doesn't get caught. Um, and that way you can get in and out um, quite easily. Oh, another thing, uh, we got the bracket uh, for the binos. Um, so they are now fitted, which is really cool. So, there we go. Um, there's your quick little ramble. When I actually uh, get more stuff, uh, there is bits missing, I have noticed, uh, from the kit. Not super duper major ones, besides the periscopes, of course. Um, there's a little bit of missing stuff, and if I don't get it, I can jimmy something up. It's just wiring. It's really annoying wiring. When I do, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to doing the metadyne bit, because that is just really complicated, nonsensical stuff and it is the hardest to reach place uh, in the tank as it is uh, for those who have worked on centurions you might be wondering why i've got the turret and all this orientated in this direction that is because the tank is stuck where it is at the moment uh, until we get the oil cooler fixed the tank can't move and i can't put the gun back or front so this is why i've done gremlin door style of trying to get around the tank um but yeah there we go. Um, that is a longer than average video for me, I think. Getting sweaty. Uh, so yeah, leave a like, uh, comment down below, ask questions. Uh, if you do have any advice on the infrared system on a Centurion 5 slash 1, not Chieftain or anything. I don't, I've been getting a few sort of comments about specifically Chieftain related um, gunnery and stuff, and they're not relatable at all, <laughs> um, unless they are, in which case you can tell me off for that, but to my knowledge, um, Chieftain shouldn't share any real similarities as far as gunnery go goes, um, or turret sort of stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, leave a comment, uh, let me know if you want me to look into anything else. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this one. I've just been, blah, I'm, I don't know, I'm running a gremlin day today. I'm just really hyper. Um, but yeah, hit a like and subscribe and I will see you tomorrow. Probably. We'll see. Bye.